I'm about to connect these two ankle knees together, but not because I want to. I literally have no other choice. And not only that, if I wait too long, this ankle knee will die. So, will I be able to combine these colonies, or will we all watch in anguish and sorrow as an empire crumbles to the ground? Prepare for the utter chaos that is about to commence, because it's almost time to combine the colonies. We start our journey here. My Nylon Dara colony has just decapitated their queen. With no way to replenish their brood, they were now doomed to fail within the next few months. But why did they kill her in the first place? Well, it turns out this is more common than you may think. With a bit of research, I put it down to just bad luck. But now I have a problem. If I can't find them a new queen soon, the colony and all the progress they've made will be for nothing. However, as it turns out, I've been secretly raising another colony of Nylon Dara ants. If I can get them to join forces with this other ant colony, they have a chance at survival. But if they don't, this experiment could end in utter disaster. I've set up this plastic box coated in Vaseline to stop any ants from escaping, as well as a layer of sand to keep the test tubes stable. And now with everything ready, it's time to officially begin the mission, combine the colonies. With the cotton removed, the ants finally had access to the outside world. They swarmed out, trying to block the entrances with the sand provided. But what they didn't know is that there was another colony a few inches across from them doing the exact same thing. Before the colonies had a chance to find each other, I placed in a liquid ant feeder filled with blueberry ant juice from Queen of Ants, along with a feeding tray filled with protein jelly. Meanwhile, two of the ants came into contact and did something I did not expect. A worker from the Queen's colony had made an alliance with the colony that still had its queen. The others just seemed to accept her into their tribe. And she even gave the queen some food that she collected earlier. However, the rest of the colonies seem intent on just filling their test tube with sand, but I was determined to combine the colonies once and for all. For now though, I had to accept defeat because the colonies would not come into contact with each other for an entire day. But I'll make sure to come back later with an even better plan, which you or the ants would not expect. 24 hours went by and I was ready to try a different tactic. However, upon closer inspection, I noticed something weird. The Queen's Colony had somehow doubled their brood pile, which was not possible without a queen. And that's when I saw it. The colony that still had its queen had lost all of their brood. Being the smaller one of the two, I assumed they couldn't stop the bigger one taking all of the larvae. The friendly ant that seemed to join forces must have just been a traitor. If they were confident enough to steal their brood, what would stop them from just killing the other one's queen. I had a plan though. I dumped Bruh. all of the ants into one arena and placed one tube into the box instead of two. And I know what you're thinking. How does this change any conflict between the colonies? Well, by both colonies being placed in an unfamiliar environment, there's a chance that they'll be confused and join forces accidentally. It wasn't an elegant plan by far, but by this point it's the only option I had. If I didn't combine the colonies, all the effort that these ants have put into building their empire would have been for nothing. Not three minutes after, the queen finally ran into the test tube and I was so relieved. Not only that, but the rest of the ants followed her with all their brood. I left the colony thinking they were finally united as one entity, but little did I know this was far from over. Two hours went by and when I came back to check on the colony, the queen was kicked out of the test tube. Oh, they were fine before. Why did they suddenly reject her? I was worried this was going to happen because this means I have to initiate plan C. With this new plan, I was confident I'll be able to merge the colonies. The the first step is to coat a box in Vaseline just like before, but this time, instead of putting a test tube in it, I dumped the entire queenless colony into it. The ants were running everywhere, but I had to ignore them for now. Instead, I picked up all the larvae and dumped it into the other colony's test tube. To my relief, they picked up the larvae and accepted it into their colony. I was not done yet though. I picked up all the freshly hatched workers and put them in as well. The workers were a lot more suspicious of these ants, but luckily they accepted them as well. Now, the reason I'm putting these guys in is because they are affected by the pheromones as much as the more mature workers. Speaking of the workers, I put them in the original plastic box. I have no idea what I want to do with them, but I don't think I can put them in the colony because I'm scared they'll kill the queen. For now, though, it was so heartwarming watching the queen interact with her new subjects. My mission is now complete. The larvae that were once doomed to hatch into a failing colony will now be destined to serve a queen and contribute to the growth of this Nylon Dira ant colony. So, after two full days of working and my plan executed, it was time to get started started on one of my most ambitious projects yet. This is an injured crab I found at a beach and I need your help raising it. So to make sure you don't miss that video, remember to subscribe. I'm nearly monetized and I'll give a shout out to anyone who gives super thanks as a celebration. Thanks for watching.